everyone. It's Lindsay at the Long Meadow Adult Center. And I'm gonna ask you all to mute yourselves, please, to help everyone here. And today we are so lucky to be with Mary Beth Bergeron. She is on the board of directors of the Council on Aging. She's the chairman of the Permanent Building Committee and she's the president of the Long Meadow Adult Community Center Fund. And we will turn our camera around so that she can introduce you to our construction of the new building so far. All right, there you go, Mary Beth. Well, first of all, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, you must be as excited as I am about a uh, new center in the town of Long Meadow. Uh, the support across the, the entire town has been amazing. Um, both in the initial initiative to get the center bill and then over the last number of months in terms of people participating by making donations towards the new center. Um, I would be remiss if I did not mention um, that Tomoka, the Friends of the Long Meadow Council on Aging, uh, have been supporting uh, this center for the, the Council on Aging for decades in their programming needs and Long Meadow Community Center Fund was established um, to help with the uh, construction upgrades and enhancements to make this center a state-of-the-art, beautiful center um, that was not included in the budget. Were not included in the budget. And I'll mention some of those as we go through the building. And now we have uh, their plans going on with them. It has been an honor to be in service to the town of Long Meadow and very specifically to all of the community and uh, support and the initiative and the work that it has taken uh, to get this center built. Um, I'm humbled by the, the support of the uh, community. And again, I'll mention that in some of those uh, that, that support as we walk through. Um, so we're going to start kind of outside. I mean, I, I assume sort of that many of you have already driven by many times the building. But I did want to mention a few things that are not easily visible. Um, first of all, there are uh, four major entrances to get into the building. We, we are going to be entering the building, the main entrance, which is right here. To the left over here, there is a large entrance that goes into the gymnasium. Yes, we got that included also. There's an entrance to the cafe, which obviously you can also enter into the build, into the cafe from inside the building. And there, then over on the front facade, there is also an entrance to get into the social services, which is specifically the nurse's office, the veteran's office, and the food pantry. And again, I'll show those to you as we go through. An area that is not finished right now um, is the outside patio, the front outside patio. And that is going to be here. It's not poured yet. It will also be concrete. So there will be places to sit outside, to wait for your ride, um, to have a cup of coffee possibly outside with your friends. Um, there will also be a few tables here along the sidewalk at the front entrance to the cafe and to the um, social services area. So there'll be a lot of areas to, to gather and chat and um, just enjoy the weather when the weather is favorable. So that's not visible now. Um, the other thing that is not visible from Lindsay's camera is there will be a basket, a half court basketball court over here for those of you who want to play maybe a little short pickup game with your friends. Um, that will be over there. And of course, the pickleball courts, which we will get to. So let's go in. I think you all don't want to hear from me. You really want to get inside. <laughs> Jim, can you just confirm that you can hear and see okay? Yeah, I can confirm that. Thank you. Okay. This is the vestibule. It's a little dark. Hopefully, Lindsay can get some light in here. Mm -hmm. We don't. We have permanent power, but not everything is connected yet. I should also mention that none of the, the trim work or flooring is in, which, of course, like, um, you know, when you redo a, a room in your own home, um, it is the finishes that really make it special. Um, and that's not done yet, but you know, and maybe we'll do another virtual tour when we're closer to the home home uh, plate uh, on the building. Um, but here is the vestibule. 
this vestibule is, you'll notice it's very wide. It's everything in this building is ADA compliant, wheelchairs coming in and out. Over here, there will be a bench for people to sit in inclement weather while they wait for a ride to pick them up right here in the front. Um, I will mention that this vestibule has been named um, in honor of Tim Coates, who was the executive director of Glen Meadow for many decades and was involved in the actual construction of Glen Meadow. So clearly a strong advocate of seniors in our community. So come on in. We're entering into sort of the grand entrance of the building. Um, when you first enter, when you come into the center, you will be going to the left over here. There will be a reception area behind this big book box here. Reception area over here. On this wall, we will have an information center. So if you want to know if you've gotten what room your classroom is going to be in, those that will be on a rolling information center so that you can choose what it is that you where you want to go. So we're going to walk into probably not of interest to an awful lot of people, but I'm going to show it to you anyway. Um, the administration area. So again, this is the reception area over here. There'll be casework or cabinet. When I use the term casework, it's cabinetry and trim work. Um, and so when I say casework, that's what it is. It's kind of all of the wood that is going to be into the in the building. So I want you to take a special notice of some of I love these light fixtures. They're just I just think they're so pretty. And then there'll be a, a my senior center. This is where you will put your your little tag through so that we know that you're in the building and what you're participating in for that day. Um, we had, this is a little bit of an add-on, I'll say. <laughs> um, we realized um, kind of early on and during this construction when we took a good look at the plans that um, our dear Lindsay Gill needed her own office. <laughs> and obviously the whole building had been designed at that point. And so we kind of squeezed in a space for her so that she could have an area just to, her yourself, to herself. So this is Lindsay's office <laughs> and she's probably happy to see it. It's beautiful. Thank you. It's small, but it'll be good. good. <laughs> okay. Over here we have an area. This will be cabinetry, basically uh, file cabinets. And then over here is going to be a workspace for two volunteers. So if there's someone in here that needs to do paperwork, this will be the area that they do it in in here. These are some of the most special offices, I must say, in the building. Over here, um, you have the outreach coordinator's office, soon to be hired outreach coordinator's office. And over to the left here is the director's office, which would be at this time, Jim Layden. All nice windows, bright, cheery. Just take a peek. Very nice. So we had trailers on the site. There were multiple trailers on the job site over to the left of the parcel. And those have been removed for the uh, installation of the pickleball courts. So the uh, contractor and uh, owner's project manager and the clerk of the works have moved over to Jim's office, to the executive director's office on a temporary basis. And uh, they got the Wi-Fi over here, et cetera, so they could continue with the construction of the pickleball courts. That's not the new furniture for yeah. that you saw. It <laughs> Immediately to the right over here is, is a private conference room. This is large enough to seat 12 people. So when there are meetings in, in the evening or like maybe tax preparation um, assistance, that'll be done in this room, out of the way, private and quiet. I will mention that every room, every meeting room has cabinetry and a sink for hand washing. None of which is installed yet, of course. <laughs> 
How are we doing so far? I'm trying to stay six feet away. From no, things. you're doing you're doing perfect. Okay, yep. I'm gonna get my card hat on now yep. because we're inside a construction a municipal construction project, and that is required. Lindsay has hers on. I do. <laughs> so where all this certainty material is, which is the ceiling tiles. This is the cafe. So when you come over to the senior center and you're waiting for a friend to join you, or you're, let's say you're 15 minutes early for the class that you're going to take, you can come in here, have a seat, meet your friends, whatever. Um, there will be coffee, possibly soup. There'll be baked goods and maybe a sandwich that you can pick up. And if you're not here for the lunch program, you can always grab a bite to eat at the cafe. Uh, the cafe was um, funded by Big Y, which is nice because they've been in the community for so long and they were very generous to make a significant donation to the cafe. Okay, so and it's obviously lots of windows mm -hmm. up there and exit to get outside so you don't have to use the main exit. If you want to take your coffee outside and or your tea or whatever and sit outside instead of inside, it's going to be there for you. So coming down here, this is the entrance to what I term the social services for the town of Longmeadow. The town nurse office is in here. And if you want to come in, Lindsay, yeah. this is really a nice space for her. She needed refrigeration, obviously, for flu shots, et cetera. So that's available for her in here. Um, and the town nurse will be able to do the services for people, whether, and that is regardless of age. This is not just for seniors. It's also for children, for, you know, middle-aged people, et cetera, who will be, will be coming in and needing her services or her, her, his services, his or hers. You'll all be pleased to see that the veteran's office is now in here and she had a less than perfect office before, but now she has a really nice size office for her to provide the services that she provides to the veterans in our community. Peek in there. And then in here, it's the food pantry. The refrigeration here and shelving, freezer, etc. One of the things, unfortunately, that I don't know is really coming across on this uh, virtual tour is the drama that is in this building when you first come in. I mean, it really is stunning. It will be stunning when you first come in. Um, so come on along. <laughs> I'm trying for stunning, but without the finished work, it's hard. <laughs> So this is Main Street USA, or Main Street Longmeadow, mm -hmm. as the case may be. This is a companion bathroom, mm -hmm. easily accessible. As soon as you come in the door, if you have a little bit of an emergency coming on, there's a the bathrooms are right here and available for you. Watch this. Yep, firing. got it. Thank you. The men's and women's rooms are in here. Again, the tile work is not done. In fact, they're not even painted in there. I will also mention to you that there is wainscoting going in on the walls that will be coming up about this high. And obviously there'll be a railing in there for people who need a little security. Now, <laughs> we're gonna go into one of the grand rooms and one of the rooms that you'll be using often when you come to the adult, adult center. This is the multi-purpose room. You'll notice that the ceiling is vaulted. The beautiful barrel white pictures up on the ceiling. There is a stage for performances. I know lots of adults like to see come to the performances that Lindsay schedules. So there'll be a stage now for them to perform on so they're easily visible for, for everyone. That stage, by the way, though, is both inside and outside. 
So we'll show you that afterwards, but someone can perform here inside and then in great weather, if people want to be outside or maybe an evening performance, that can take place outside. Those doors open and you'll be able to take, uh, participate in something outside, maybe an evening conference or uh, concert or something that Lindsay will schedule. <laughs> Putting the pressure on you. <laughs> One of the add-ons that we did um, just recently is um, many people who participate at the adult center have difficulty hearing in large rooms. And we are having installed a hear what's called a hearing loop. Um, everything in this building we're hoping will be state of the art and will take, take this building forward into the future for 20, 30, 40 years. As we all know, there's been many technological advances and one of those is putting in hearing loops in large rooms like this that actually connect through the through the audio system, and um, they they enhance someone's hearing aids so that they're able to hear better in a room such as this. I will also mention that um, Paloka made a significant contribution to the, to the Longmeadow Adult Community Center Fund for all of the audio visual equipment in the building. So thank you to Paloka. One of the concepts behind adult centers today is to have activity beget activity. So you'll notice up there, these large open spaces, those will be glass in. And there will be activities happening up there and activities happening down here. And um, that tends to have make people want to participate in more things. And so that's why you'll find that there's a lot of open space, open areas in the building. So that, you know, hey, watch somebody play pickleball from the fitness room. I want to try that, you know, or you see people playing um, pinaco or bridge or mahjong up in the game room. Oh, maybe I can join that. Um, so it, activity begets activity. And especially when you see people having such a good time. It's true. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll come down here, Lindsay. Mm -hmm. I will, oh, I also should mention that um, this room, uh, we received a significant $50,000 challenge grant from the Irene and George Davis Foundation. I think many people probably are aware that the Davises do live here in town and they wanted to participate in the construction of the new building and they made us and so this room will be named after the Irene and George Davis Foundation. The editor's closet, mm -hmm. more storage obviously as tables come up and come down in this room. Um, depending on what Lindsay schedules. <laughs> Lindsay's going to be a very busy woman. <laughs> depending on what Lindsay schedules, <laughs> there'll be storage in here for those items. This is locked because it's the electrical room and they don't want anyone accessing it. This is not the finished work on the building. Here we have the kitchen service area. And obviously that is also open into the kitchen and there'll be a uh, counter here where they'll be able to pick up and bring your food to you if you're having lunch, etc. Okay. <laughs> Interestingly, the kitchen, as well as um, the grand staircase, which we will look at, were also uh, donated by uh, Presley Blake and his wife, um, Helen, and they wanted to have their names on the grand staircase and the kitchen in memory of the wife of an employee of theirs. So coming in here, there is virtually no equipment in here whatsoever, but I'm sure you can see that this kitchen is going to be very busy. There's a lot of equipment going in here from ovens to dishwashers, grills, etc., so that they can make 
some fabulous food for the lunches. <laughs> and maybe for other things as well. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Watch your step. Thank you. So there's a loading area here. The parking lot when you're facing the building to the right is going to serve a couple of different functions. And one of them is loading into the kitchen pantry. Um, and that is here. And not to be confused with the food pantry. This is the pantry for dry goods, etc., for um, the kitchen. And then there's a new freezer here. I'm not sure if it's locked or not. And a new freezer in here. So let's just walk out here quickly. Mm -hmm. This is the loading platform again. To the left here, you will see a generator. The generator by a Massachusetts, um, and then into the budget for the back. The generator areas throughout the building so that it's safe for us. This is the parking lot over here for not, but also in the summertime pool. This playground that is over there. First, that we've had the, um, the nonprofit paid to have the pool painted to match the exist the new adult center, and there'll be new signage going on that as well. By the way, I should mention that if you're looking to where the, all the workmen are, there is someone going on ahead of us, getting the workmen out of the way so that we have clear access. And some of the guys obviously don't want their pictures taken. Um, but I should, so it's not as though people aren't working here. They are, they're just moving out of the way so that, that we can do this uh, this afternoon. Um, I would be remiss if I did not mention the hard work that has been done by all of the workmen in this building um, from you know, uh, pouring the foundations, the excavation work, um, et cetera. These guys work hard, they work long hours and get here early by the way, uh, and work under many times very adverse conditions. So just let's give them a little credit because they're the ones who built it. <laughs> Over here, we have the grand staircase, which we will walk up in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. um, but I want to show you the rest of the first floor first. This is the grand staircase. It will be stunning once it's finished. It doesn't look too pretty now, but it's usable. Here to the left, we have the elevator. You can see it's a really nice size. Um, this was funded by Kevin and Sue Lawson, residents of the town of Longmeadow. Um, very generous contribution. Also a challenge grant, might I add. Um, over here is kind of a combination room. It, it's a lounge and library. The library will be over here. There will be a few tables in here if you're going to do a puzzle or uh, you want to read a book, but there will also be furniture in here, a, so a small sofa, chairs, etc. And here you will have the fireplace, which is two sided. So there will be a small se se uh, section of furniture over here, furniture over here, tables and tables. Um, the friends wall is going to go on this wall. And basically what that will list is every single person, every single person who has made a contribution to the, uh, the new adult center. Um, we're working diligently on making sure we have spelling, etc. correct. And if you'd like to throw in a contribution, you'd be welcome to. But we will list every person who has made a contribution to the adult center, regardless of the size. 
of the contribution. Now we are going into a pretty exciting area for adults or and young people in our community. And that's the new gymnasium. Gymnasium floor will be marked for. Now we're just competing with a little bit of sound. So the gymnasium floor will be marked for pickleball, basketball, and volleyball. There will be a scoreboard for those of you who might be the For the pickleball, there will be three inch inside courts and four outside courts. But they'll all that will be used by this room, I think, will be used all the time and hopefully well into the evening. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you'll also see the walking path. We'll take a look at that from upstairs also. Okay, over here, let's see. And open it now. But these are the four pickleball courts that are being installed. This is why we had to move the trailers. It actually makes a nice connection between this facility and Greenwood Park School facility. Coming along. Mm -hmm. Here you'll see the basketball hoops. Because they're so dark, I'm not going to say, I'm not, we're not going to go inside, but this is the men's and the women's rooms. Um, and there will also be lockers in here. So if you come in, you need to change your shoes, you get a pocketbook, whatever, you'll have a place to store your personal items. Okay, now we're going to go back to the grand staircase. Mm -hmm. Storage. This is where the balls will be stored. Mm -hmm. We'll have racks for basketball um, area for pickleball, I'm sure. You know, uh, volleyball is over here. Easily come in, pick up a ball, and start playing. Mm -hmm. Not me. Here at the top of the landing, there will be a bench here for someone who wants to just uh, either take a rest or this is somebody kind of out of the way of everyone else.
while the thickness of curtain is here, there's quite a bit of a curtain going in. There'll be weights, treadmills, bikes, things that you would customarily find, but most of them adapted somewhat to elder use. Glass on both sides. We want people to see and use the buildings. And here's the walking track. <laughs> When planning for the building, we try to take into consideration what seemed to be important to the people in Long Meadow. And if anything, it became very obvious this past spring for the amount of people who are either out walking, and that's from daylight to daybreak, uh, to, to, to nighttime, um, either out walking, running, jogging, whatever. There will be another area, there is another area over here. On the plans, it's called a warm-up area. But I sort of see this as a, maybe yoga, maybe a little bit of dance, um, those kinds of activities that would be taking place in this area, which can fit a lot of people. Have you been in here yet, Lindsay? Not lately. Okay. But <laughs> well, you were in B1 just rain, right? Yeah, okay. it's been a little bit, so this yeah. is exciting. So I'm going to go back out to here. But I would be remiss if I did not mention that over in this area, out that doorway, is a second set of stairs that goes downstairs and then up into the attic. This is also emergency areas in the event of people with wheelchairs if the power goes out can't use the elevator this is the area that they would be going they would be stayed and staged basically in here the fire department is aware that they would come over they have access to downstairs they come in and they just carry the people downstairs so it's not if you if you are in a wheelchair it is not an issue Again, there'll be tables through here, game tables through here, and game tables through here. Up to, but not including, this area over here, where there will be two billiard tables. You can see where the guys are putting in the lights. I did not mention that um, there will also be ping pong, and that ping pong will take place in the gymnasium. Okay, in here. This is classroom one. Look at the windows in here. Really fabulous location for classroom. Nice and bright. And of course, there's a um, this is And this is the largest of the classrooms, or it can be separated into two classrooms. Really nice size room. 
There is a dividing wall that comes down here. So if Lindsay wants to schedule um, a cooking class over here, a lecture of some sort here, she's got more ways to do that. And speaking of cooking classes, over here will be a residential style kitchen. Um, and there will be um, an island here with the stove cooktop and adequate space for demonstration if you exist. Lindsay's going to be busy. <laughs> Stove, dishwasher, garbage, just like uh, your kitchen at home. And of course, again, great storage over here. Jim, can you confirm that you can see in here still or Mike's window, one of you, <laughs> please? Loud and clear on the Agawam side. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> so what do you think so far, Mike? I think it's exciting. It's beautiful. It is exciting. You were you were involved in this from the very beginning. Very uh, me with your statistics. After the very beginning. I remember writing you off and I hey Mike, how about this? <laughs> Right. You found it all. Again, this is kind of a dark area, but I'll show you. This is the yeah. Lindsay, we're missing a great deal of what you're saying. Okay. I think it depends on the connection you have. I can I can see you. Um and I will my connection is fine, thank you. The problem is that Mary Beth turns away from you. When she turns away from you, she's turning away from the mic, and we lose her. Okay, oh, thank, thank you for your feedback. This is, I've done this, but that, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so here, <laughs> We have the men's and the women's rooms for the second floor. This too is a bathroom, um, but it also has a shower in it. In the event that is, uh, let's say, some sort of incident and someone needs to get a shower or get washed down, there is a shower in here for that space. So it's gone through the second floor as well. Mm -hmm. So do we do questions now? Yeah, let me look if I can see the chat. Um, or if Jim, if you're there, if you want to relay the questions, I'm going to see if I can see them here. Let's see. Chat. All right, so I'm not seeing any questions. Um, if you want to raise your hand or just unmute yourself, if you have any questions. Yeah, good idea. Good idea. Lindsay, I'll monitor the chat just in case. I don't know if Jim's still there. Thank you so much. Mike's monitoring the chat. That's very helpful. So there's a question. Did you have to, uh, did you have to make changes since and due to COVID? changes that are going to yes of course yes that some of the changes that are going to take place are not included in the initial plans um but down at the reception area clearly they're going to be putting in um plexiglass also at the cafe area and each room will be addressed as needed purposes um Mary, Mary Beth, you had mentioned youth having access to the gym. Can you elaborate on the uh, on the availability to the youth of the community? And youth is in quotes the second time. I'm not sure if we're defining youth in that concept or also just expanding on the the breakdown of the access to the gym for the public. I 
a difficult question to answer, um, but I will get on. Clarification that the younger folks in the quotes meant not seniors. So just, I guess, the breakdown of, of senior access versus general public access. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, there, be, there are efforts underway to making sure that the building is available in the evening. If you remember, you know, the building over at the old building, the rooms were used for um, the room area used at night for um, uh, different committee meetings, etc. We expect that that will continue, but it will continue based on a public-private partnership. We're, we're hoping that once people start using the building, they'll be generous in support of the Council on Aging in terms of the nonprofits, and we are hopeful that um, the town of Long Meadow can increase the budget slightly. And of course, the council on aging does have a revolving account. So it depends on how well the center does. It depends on, um, I know that the Long Meadow Adult Community Center Fund has committed to funds to go towards additional staff people. So I would expect that it will be open in the evenings and yes, you will be welcome. We have to remember that it is a municipal building. It is not solely for seniors. It is, an, it is a community building. It is supported by taxpayers in the entire community, which includes people under the age of 60. So because it's, because it's a municipal building and by state law, what is available for one person or one age group has to be available for all. It can't be discriminatory in terms of who can use the facilities for the town of Long I hope that answered your question. I think it did. Um, if there's follow-ups, I'll get to them. Um, is there any permanent art, such as a mural, that is part of the plan? Any permanent art, like a mural, that's part of the plan? Not yet, but we, we did hire an interior decorator, and I know that she's looking right now at artwork that will go up in the building in different room areas. So I think... I think that you've touched on this, uh, Mary Beth, but if you could just a quick yes or no, will the recreation department be able to utilize the gym as well? I believe that the, the Council on Aging will be the one scheduling the gymnasium. Scheduling okay. the gymnasium. It doesn't mean that people who you know, participate in Park and Rec can't use the facilities, of course, but the scheduling has to be done out of one location, and that okay. will be understanding the Council on Aging. Will there be AC in the building? Oh, yeah. Air conditioning. Oh, oh my gosh, yes. It's completely air conditioned, obviously heated. There's, it's fully sprinklered. Um, we are actually in the process of pricing out. Um, as I said before, we're, we're, we're seeking state of the art um, we could put into the center. So I did talk briefly about the hearing loop. We will have outside to um, electrical vehicle charging stations. Um, we will have uh, phone charging stations in particular locations throughout the building. So if you get, forget to charge your phone when you're, when you're um, at your uh, house, then you come here and you, want, you need to make a phone call, you'll be able to do that. We're putting in a cell phone booster, or cell booster. Um, hopefully that should get approved within the next week or two because if, you, if you're here, and you've tried to make a phone call, you know that phone calls are very difficult from your cell phone. You, have, it, you don't have a good connection here on Inkley, in Greenwood Park. Um, we're also now investigating the use of what's called UV lights or ionization. Uh, it's put in the heating system. And kills 99.9% .9 of all viruses and germs. We are investigating the cost of adding that to the building because uh, the building is as clean as possible and as virus-free as possible, um, not only for the pandemic, but also moving forward. Okay, thank you. I'm just peeking here. Let's see. Um, the center is beautiful and vast. 
great efforts with donations and appreciate the presentation by Mary Beth. She's doing a great job. Does the library have game tables? The, game, the library will have a few tables in it, not a lot. The games are up here, but it will definitely have, you know, if you want to play a game of cards or, you know, just four people or two people, you want to do a puzzle, uh, play Monopoly, you know, whatever it is your game of choice, probably the library might be a best place to do that. We have a library lounge area. Um, but if there's, you know, more than four of you, you're probably going to want to come upstairs here to the game. Great. All right. I think. Is that all we see when would we be finished? Hello. That's a question. You know, if you talk to the contractor right now, he'll say it's October. That's the last word we got from him. It will not be finished by the end of October. Um, as we talked before, there is a lot of case, the casework, for just for example, the casework has to come in. It has to sit in the building for two weeks. And then it has to be installed, and it's all custom made. By each wall is custom made. All the cabinetry is custom made. Um, my best guess at this point is mid to the end of December, but that's just the guess. Um, and clearly, uh, you know, the next question is when can we open? And clearly, I can't answer that question. Fran, it looks like you have a question, but you're muted. I would like to add something to okay. that question. I just believe wondering the be Santa. What kind of one second, Fran? Okay. Okay, one second. I believe that the building will be substantively finished by the mid to the end of December. That does not mean the building is finished though and ready for occupancy because the staff over at the center has to move over, the food pantry has to move over, the veterans office has to be move over, and the IT has to get up and running. So that's gonna take another month, I think. Go ahead, Frank. I'm just wondering what kind of flooring we're looking at, like in the main areas, is it gonna be carpeting? Is it gonna be tile um, in the, um, uh, the activity rooms? What, what kind of flooring are you looking at? building is carpet, but there are some rooms like uh, actually the multi-purpose room is kind of a, a mixture of flooring. Um, and I think that the, the kitchen area, for example, upstairs here, there, it is a mixture of flooring again. You know, both the uh, hard surface tile type flooring, although it's more like a combo and linoleum, and the rest of it is carpet. And I've seen the carpet in as well. Just... Thank you. Uh, before you go, there was a question. I switched from my phone to my computer, so I don't have the chat currently. So if new, new stuff comes in, but there was a question. Can you just quickly summarize again how many classrooms there were in total? There are three formal classrooms, one, two, three. In addition to that, though, classes can take place in the um, conference room, or I guess classes could take place in the multi-purpose room for sure. Um, you know, this is before or after lunch. Um, and then uh, classes could take, you could have exercise classes in the gymnasium, in the fitness room, and in the warm up area. Thank you. And then I think there was a question, and I could be wrong, so Lindsay, if you want to check the chat, but I think there was a question about the library and tables. I don't remember the exact yep. context. Thank you. She got that, and then someone just said, Does the carpet pile ensure ease for wheelchairs? Yes, yes. It's Everything is designed for wheelchairs, walkers, and for those of us who are more mobile. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Let me see if I can, we can say thank you so much to Mary Beth, all, all her work. This is not just today, this is weekly, daily, all the time. So thank you, Mary Beth. And thank you. Let's see. I will say thank you all for being here. This was so nice. Thank you to, um, and hopefully we can do this again when we go.